Hello everyone, it's so good to be here again. I just came back from the premiere of Doom Part 2, and my god was this an incredible cinematic experience. Is anyone in the world surprised by this? I don't think so. I think you literally have to be deaf, dumb, and blind to have not have heard the praise and the hype of Doom Part 1, or any screenshot, teaser, any morsel of information about this upcoming sequel is more than enough for anyone to realize that there's something quite powerful and monumental going on here. Denis Villeneuve is delivering yet another absolute banger of a sci-fi epic. He seems to be on quite the legendary win streak and shows no sign of stopping once again. It is quite exhilarating to see our very own hometown hero from Montreal be as wonderful at what he does as he is. Congratulations not only to him, but to everyone who participated on this massive project. And my god, is it an epic. This is the kind of blockbuster epics that we rarely get to see nowadays, if ever quite in such splendorous detail. So let's get the obvious out of the way. This is quite the visual and auditory feast for the eyes and ears. The soundtrack is just as thunderous as it ever was before, and all the intricate sound designs are just as unique and remarkable as they were in part one. And when it comes to the visual part of it, of course, the cinematography is top tier. Greg Fraser won an Oscar for cinematography for the previous film, and he may very well go on to win again. The lighting, the composition, the color palette is quite mesmerizing, but really there isn't a single facet of the visual presentation that isn't phenomenal in one way or another. I am absolutely blown away by the painstakingly intricate details in each and every one of the frames. Truly, this is a film that you could be studying for years on years, not only once again, like I said, the cinematography, but all the problems all the costume designs, the architecture, the environments, all of it. It is simply breathtaking. So with all these pleasantries out of the way, what about the story? Because I think that is the question that everyone is most curious to have answered. Dune Part 1 was quite a slow burn, not that it bothered me personally, and that's not to say that Dune Part 2 isn't a slow burn, it definitely is, especially in the first half of the film. There are some moments that I did find drag on ever so slightly, but even then, to contrast the sprawling deserts of Arrakis, we have quite the vivid contrast with getting a deeper look into the Harkonnen lifestyle, and that is such an eerie, creepy, and juicy and fascinating experience like nothing else this year. Some of those black and white sequences were quite frankly mesmerizing. Going to this film, I knew that there would be these black and white sequences, but I didn't know why. I won't spoil that for you, but I thought that was super clever and unique. Yeah, the visual splendor of Dune has no bounds. Forgive me, I digress. So even those slower segments, there are some really interesting world building events. They're still building up to this climax, but indeed in this sequel, there's a much heavier emphasis on action and they are quite exhilarating. Though that isn't the part that personally resonates with me the most in this film. That would have to be the daunting weight of this prophecy that has been teased in the previous film and now we are on the very cusp of having these prophecies come to fruition. Quite frankly, I found this to be a terrifying experience. Not only because I have read all the books so I know exactly where all of this is going, this story is not over far, far, far from it. When it comes to the books written by Frank Herbert, this is just the very first book and things get pretty esoteric later on. But even putting the books aside, Paul Atreides himself knows exactly what is going on because these visions that he's been having are becoming more and more prevalent and clear too throughout this character's progression in the story. And what he sees absolutely terrifies him as it should. I'm not going to go into any further detail to avoid any spoilers because I do think you guys should check this film out for yourselves, but it is quite oppressive having that weight of this prophecy that seems doomed to happen. It really does feel like this impossible chessboard that we find ourselves in that is the machinations of the Bene Gesserit who are working from the shadows throughout years if not centuries and beyond to unleash their plans. God knows what their true motives are. So as you can tell, I'm head over heels in love with this film. There are no shortage of reasons for that, but in the spirit of constructive criticism, I don't think this film is quite perfect. As I mentioned earlier, there are some moments in the first half of the film that do drag on ever so slightly, even though there's quite a lot of interesting things happening. So I do find that most of the weaknesses come from the screenplay. Not to say that's a bad screenplay. I think there's quite a lot to praise for it, seeing just how many different characters there are in this story, and none of them feel wasted. They all have their purpose and they're well utilized, even if they have quite limited screen times. So this isn't just quite the all-star cast, which it totally is just being used for Hollywood marketing purposes. No, they're quite well utilized for the most part. Though, for example, I do find that Shani and Paul Trey's romantic relationship, 
leaves a little bit to be desired. Not to say that they don't have chemistry together. I do think both actors play off each other quite well, actually. But that initial romantic spark, it feels a little shallow. We've been fed in the original film that they would end up being together and it kind of just happens. So that part did feel a little shallow. And though we have this massive cast here and they're all quite well integrated in all their roles, I do find that there's one actor perhaps that sticks out like a green hat with an orange thumb and that would be Christopher Walken, who kind of feels like Christopher Walken, not necessarily this massive character he's supposed to be. It's really not a deal breaker, it's more amusing than anything else, not hating on him for a single second, but I couldn't help but have this knee-jerk reaction to it. And perhaps another thing worth bringing up, I do feel that Dave Bautista's character, Roban, is kind of a goofball, actually. Which leads me to my next point, which is probably where the screenplay fumbles the most, which is its comedic timing. It really does feel like it clashes with the overall tone of the film, which is super serious, contemplative, very spiritual, religious, and very mature. But it feels like on a regular basis, there's this comedic one-liner that's shoehorned into the dialogue to get a crack out of the crowd. And to play devil's advocate, it did kind of work. I was kind of surprised just how much people were laughing their ass off in the theater, which I guess is a good thing in a way. Personally, I found it to be kind of cringe for the most part. And one of them particularly was in particularly poor taste. I don't know about you guys, but making jokes about atomic bombs seems in pretty poor taste. Lord have mercy. But really, these are minor quips in the grand scheme of things. This is really me nitpicking and looking for cracks in the armor. This is quite a sensational, epic, epic sci-fi experience unlike anything we'll see this year this is without question one of the best films we're gonna get this year i'm simply blown away <laughs> oh my god i've been waiting for this film for quite a while and it turned out just as great as i hoped it would and then some so yeah i think this is easily a 9 out of 10. I'm thrilled to see people on social media being super excited about the film. It seems to be selling out tickets like hotcakes, which is really motivating because this could lead to a third film from Denis Villeneuve. Like I mentioned earlier, the story is far, far from over. I think Denis Villeneuve isn't going to tackle some of the later books because they admittedly get very, very esoteric. Not gonna spoil it. My god, Denis Villeneuve really just caught the essence of what Frank Herbert's Dune was all about and brought it to glorious, spectacular levels of cinema artistry that will without question be one of the crowning achievements of 2024 cinema. So yeah, definitely go check it out and go see it on the biggest screen possible, the most badass sound system because this really is a thunderous experience. You want to be blown away by this film. And even if this is a bit too much of a slow burn for some people, I think it'll be damn near impossible to not be moved in some way, shape or form by it. So yeah, with all that being said, wishing you and your loved ones nothing but the best. Take care and talk to you soon.